We want magnetic fusion energy to work, to be able to make energy like the sun does. Well, if you have something like the sun, it has a lot of heat. It's going to heat up the walls. And that means whatever's on the walls is going to end up in the device. Well, look at this graph. This tells you the atomic number, the material that's made out of, and how much you can have in a fusion device for it to still work. If you make it out of something like tungsten, very high Z, you have huge problems when the heat hits the wall because you can only tolerate a tiny amount. But if you make it out of something low atomic number, like lithium, you can see that you could have quite a bit in your plasma and it would work. The low atomic number is not the only reason to use lithium. The real advantage of lithium is because when hydrogen, the hot hydrogen, well, really deuterium or tritium, that we're trying to get in a fusion device, when it hits the wall, if it hits a lithium wall, it sticks. Because either this forms lithium hydrides or it simply dissolves okay, in the lithium. The hydrogen, the deuterium, the tritium dissolves into the lithium. And you might say, so what? Who cares? We care. Let's imagine the sun. Let's picture the sun. All right, draw like Mr. Sun here. Okay, we got sun. He's got shades. He's got a big smile. He's bright. And whatever leaves the sun keeps going. It's in outer space, right? And because of that, because of the enormous size, the enormous distances, any of the um, Gases that escape the confinement, the solar wind, does not hit a wall. If this instead was inside a bottle, say a magnetic bottle, a fusion device, then whatever leaves this place that has the fusion reaction hits this wall and it sticks. It somehow is in the wall. And at some point when the wall gets saturated, it will have to come back. The flux to the wall will equal the flux going back. This flux to the wall, that's the temperature of the sun, the temperature of the fusion device, 100 million degrees. But the temperature of this stuff coming back, right, this return flux is going to be the temperature of the wall. The wall's not 100 million degrees. It's probably not even 1,000 degrees. It's hundreds of degrees. Let's say it's 300 degrees. I am always returning cold material into the fusion reaction. Hot stuff comes out, cold stuff goes in. So what does this do for our fusion reaction? Let's imagine we've got a toroidal fusion device, right? So it kind of goes across here, and here's the other cross section of it, sort of a donut cut in half. But let me just concentrate on, on one side of this. Let me just concentrate on the profiles across here. So I'll, I'll make this a bit bigger. In a standard fusion device, when without lithium walls, because I have this return of the cold gas, if I drew the temperature going across here, okay, it's going to be cold at the edge and only really hot in the middle. And that means only this very center portion where the temperature is high will participate in fusion. I have this very large device and the only part actually fusing is a small core in the middle going all the way around the donut. So if we have all of a giant fusion device like Eater, all of that volume is for a relatively small amount of the volume participating in fusion. Now, 
let's say I have lithium walls. So here, I don't have the cold return flux. And because I don't have the cold return flux, there is no cold coming back. So my temperature profile can be flat. I can be hot all the way across. Yes, there's a plasma sheath, very, very small near the wall, but basically my entire volume can fuse. All of this becomes something that can participate and make fusion reactions. I don't need this much fusion reaction. If I only needed this much fusion to be able to make your economic criteria to make 10 times, 20 times more power than you put into it, then I can make the device only this big. And if I can make the volume of the device smaller, right? If my fusion device now only has to be this big, right? Instead of either size big. If I've reduced where I only get one third of the radius, only that inner third was fusing, and now I have a third, and it's a right a sphere, so I take this cubed, I have something on the order of 20 times smaller fusion device. Okay? And 20 times smaller means 20 times less expensive. This is the promise of a lithium wall or lithium PFC fusion. If we can make it work, we can get the same amount of fusion power in a dramatically smaller and therefore less expensive device. Now, a couple of questions. Can you actually make it work? Let's head to my lab and find out. This is one of the structures I showed you, and we have many more too. I'm here at the Center for Plasma Material Interactions, my laboratory, where we actually test this type of device. We do this in two different machines. One of them is MCATS, which is designed to allow high temperature lithium to come in in a very good vacuum system, which will tell us if things wet, if the lithium is actually compatible with this material and if it flows across it. And then, just this way, we have our high heat flux facility. We call it slide, and it has this structure in the middle by the magnetic fields with an electron beam that goes in a sheet and can simulate the plasma actually hitting the device at high heat fluxes. In this part of my lab, we worry about taking the hydrogen and deuterium back out of the lithium. We have a number of devices to do this, all the way back here to our distillation column, which will show us if you can remove the deuterium fast enough to be able to make this whole system work. We need to test this in an actual fusion device that's under our control, and that's what we have Hydro for, the hybrid Illinois device for research and applications, a Stellarator and a Tokamak, where we will show that we can put lithium into the device, suck up the deuterium, pull it out, take the deuterium out, and do it all in a continuous now you might say, well, Professor Ruzik, won't the lithium get saturated? Well, you're right, it would. And that's why we can't just have lithium on the wall. We have to have molten flowing lithium. I have to be able to take out this excess deuterium and tritium and present a fresh molten lithium surface to the next material that comes out of the fusion device. So get this right. I want flowing liquid metal on the edge of the plasma 
and it has to work, it has to keep going, it has to not contaminate the plasma, and can you do it? Can you find experiments? Can you figure out a way to do it? Well, we did. We did. And it's just one of several different ways. It's the one we've been working on quite a bit ourselves. It doesn't mean it's the best way. But having flowing molten lithium in some manner at your device is going to give us this economic advantage that could allow fusion to actually be competitive. Now, the thing we did is based on a principle called thermoelectric magnetohydrodynamics. T-E-M-H-D. The concept works very similar to a thermocouple. Let's say I have a structure of trenches. And in these trenches, I'm going to have lithium. I'm going to overfill it just a little bit. And these trenches will be made out of uh, molybdenum, tungsten, maybe even stainless steel. And the heat from the plasma, right, hits here. This is my uh, heat, right? I'm trying to make a reactor. I'm trying to generate heat. Ultimately, we're going to boil water someplace, make steam, make electricity, okay? Heat flux is going to hit here. And I'm going to have uh, cooling down here, okay? I'm going to um, take this heat away through some cooling channels. Now what happens is it means that the top here, this joint right here, this is going to be hot. And this joint down here is going to be cold by comparison to each other. If I take two metals and I have them at a given temperature, it's what is known as a thermal couple, all right? And, you know, we have some pictures and some typical thermocouples might be here. Thermocouples have the advantage and the property that if I have a temperature, a, temp a given temperature produces a given voltage. And a different temperature gives you a different voltage. So I will have, say, a high volt here. Maybe this will be at uh, 1 volt, and down here it will be at 0 0.9 volts of a voltage difference. But if I have a voltage difference in a conductor, in a liquid metal as a conductor, I am going to get a current that flows. The current will flow down through the lithium and back up through the metal. But I want to concentrate on this part that's flowing here because there's a huge magnetic field, okay? This is the magnetic field of the fusion device. That's how we confine the plasmas, right? We have a huge B. And this, we often use the symbol for this current, is J. And there's a force in the world. There's a force called J cross B equals F, force. And if I have my current going this way, my magnetic field going this way, I will get a force in and out of this board, and it will push the lithium across the trench. The hotter it gets, the faster the lithium will flow. And this allows us to move this clean lithium across the surface, self-propelled by the two things the plasma gives us. The plasma gives us the heat, and the plasma has the magnetic field. And this concept is one way that you can actually get lithium to go across the surface, always presenting a clean surface, gets to the other end, you take it out, you take the deuterium and tritium out, you put it back in clean, you worry if the lithium gets too hot, too hot it all evaporates. Well, hopefully you can arrange this whole thing so that it can cross the, cross the plasma without getting too hot. And it actually works. Here you see a video that shows 
a time-lapse photography of the molten lithium in the trenches. Notice they're slightly underfilled. And as the electron beam, the heat source goes on, you can see that the velocity increases as it goes across. So this sounds really cool. And you saw that we can actually do it in our lab. And then the question is, well, does it work anywhere else? Can you put it in a real fusion device? Well, we did actually. We put it in the HT7 tokamak in China in 2012. And here's the papers and some frames of video of seeing the lithium move across. We've put it in um, large linear plasma simulators to get an idea of the heat flux and other properties that could take place. And here it is in um, the Differ machine in the Netherlands, Magnum PSI. Also, people have used this type of lithium concept, not necessarily the TEMHD, but, but that's all right, uh, in larger fusion devices like EAST in China, and also in a very particular experiment at Princeton that was designed to test exactly this, the lithium tokamak experiment. And what was really fascinating about this is it proved that you get the flat temperature profile that by lowering the recycling, you actually do get the hot plasma all the way across and that your confinement goes up. All of these evidences lead to the thought that lithium could be a real solution to finding fusion promise. The ability to make energy at a reasonable price the same way the sun does it. That's what you need to know about lithium wall fusion.